Let's take a look at the weather data resource map. The EPW app aggregates the available typical meteorological year type weather data from three sources. From the Energy Plus website, climate.onebuilding.org, and also the Ashery IVAC2 dataset available to purchase from Whitebox Technologies. Climate.onebuilding's collection is by far the largest thanks to the amazing effort from Drew and Linda. You can see a good spread of red dots covering all seven continents, including Antarctica. This app requires Google Maps to work, which may cause accessibility issues for some users. The reason we chose Google Maps was its fantastic search function. If you know the name of a place, you can type and find it. For example, let's see Giant's Causeway. And here you are. Or even in your own language. Here is the Statue of uh, Liberty in New York. You can use the blue circle to measure the distance between the weather stations and your place of interest. Like here. The nearest weather station is only 8 kilometers or 5 miles away. You can also use the circle to select weather files within a certain distance. I'll come back to this in a moment. Clicking on a dataset, you will see some basic information about it. There's a link to download it from the original source. Sometimes the link does not work in Chrome, for example, as climate.one building does not use HTTPS. If that happens, right-click on the Download button and use Save Link As. You can also get an overview of the dataset using the Stats button. This shows daily temperature ranges, monthly solar radiation, and the set of wind roses. The temperatures chart looks a little messy. You can turn off the dew point temperatures to see the daily temperature ranges, or turn off the minimum temperatures to see how close is the dew point temperature to the dry bulb temperature, which give you an indicator of the humidity level. The wind rose charts show both annual and monthly stats. It's not a NOAA type of wind roses. Rather, it shows average wind speed on the radius and frequency with the shades. The reason that we chose this design is discussed in another video. You can find the link below. If you want to see more details of the dataset, you can open it in the data viewer. All the information here are extracted from the EPW file itself. You can view the very useful stat file here. The overview tab is largely the same as the stats window, except that it shows an yet another set of wind roses, this time using a radar heat map design. Point to a cell and you can see what's in it. The hourly tab shows all the hourly data that are relevant to building simulations. Atmospheric pressure and relative humidity, temperatures, solar radiations, illuminance values, wind speed, and precipitation. You can zoom in to see more details. The EPW Viewer has a second panel to let you compare two weather files. Let's go back to the map and select a few more first. Remember the blue circle? If you click anywhere in the circle, it selects all the datasets. Right-click deselects them. You can move the circle elsewhere to select more. The selected weather files will appear here. 
This dialog lets you search and select files in the catalog as well. This may be too much. Let's have a look at the three datasets at Newark Liberty Airport. This opens to three files in the viewer. Let's open TMY3 on the left, open the right panel, and TMYX on the right. The difference between TMI3 and the TMYX is that the TMI3 data are based on the 30 years between 1976 and 2005, whereas the TMIX has much, has much wider base from 1948 to 2018. You can see the notable period. Uh, you can see the notable periods are different, and the ground temperatures are different too. The design conditions are from the handbook, hence they are identical. Looking at overview tabs, they are actually very similar. The only thing I've noticed is that the minimum dry bulb temperature is significantly higher in TMYX than in TMY3. The peak temperature are similar. If you open TMIX for the more recent years instead, the lower temperature seems to be higher still, although the peak temperature is a little lower. This is expected from a shorter sampling period. The solar radiations, on the other hand, are very different. New York seems to be sunnier in the last couple of decades. But whether this is a verifiable trend, I'm not sure. Okay, that's about the weather resource app. There is another purpose for selecting multiple weather files using this app. I'll keep it a secret for now until the relevant functions are fully implemented. Thanks for watching and see you next time.